This is my ultimate Marvel Rivals performance guide. In this video, I'm going to cover both Windows and in-game graphic settings for the highest performance and lowest possible latency in Marvel Rivals. As always, my recommendations are based on actual in-game performance measurements using both an NVIDIA and AMD system whose specifications are shown on screen right now. Additionally, I provide side-by-side -side comparisons of every single graphic setting in Marvel Rivals to help you find the best trade-off between high performance and good visibility. For the first time ever, I am also including latency measurements to show you which settings positively or negatively affect input latency. Beginning with Resizable Base Address Register, or Rebar for short, we can see the results for my Intel and NVIDIA-based system in blue and for my all AMD-based system in red. As expected, we find a significant improvement of both the averages and 1% lows when enabling Rebar, or actually Smart Access Memory, as the feature is called on AMD GPUs. On the other hand, traditionally NVIDIA GPUs didn't benefit much from enabling Resizable Bar, and in fact in most modern titles Rebar is not actually natively supported by the NVIDIA drivers. However, we can use the NVIDIA Profile Inspector in order to force Rebar on, and if we do this, then we see a slight improvement in performance even on NVIDIA GPUs. So, for the best performance in Marvel Rivals, I would recommend to enable Resizable Bar both on AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. If you don't know how, check out the video linked in the card right now, where I'm showing you how to enable Resizable Bar on both platforms. Moving on to some Windows settings that generally can improve gaming performance. Based on my two systems, I wasn't able to find a significant boost in performance when enabling either hardware accelerated GPU scheduling or game mode. However, if you want to have these options enabled for other games, you'll also not introduce any performance reductions in Marvel Rivals. These settings you can find by clicking on the Start menu and typing in Game Mode, where you'll find the Game Mode settings, and then under Related Settings, under Graphics, if you click on Change Default Graphics Settings, you'll find the hardware actuated GPU scheduling option. On a final note, there's also optimizations for windowed games. However, this option actually only affects DirectX 10 and DirectX 11 games. And of course, Marvel Rivals actually uses the DirectX 12 API. Okay, so let's hop into the game. And the first option that I want to talk about is the display mode. Now with DirectX 12 games, there doesn't appear to be much of a difference in terms of the different display modes that are available. Now I really have to read up more on this topic, but from my testing, all three of these options have exactly the same performance and more crucially, they also have exactly the same input latency. So I guess the only real difference between these options is that with full screen, you are actually able to change your aspect ratio and your resolution. For instance, if you are playing on a widescreen monitor and you want to play at a different aspect ratio, you can do it like that. However, if you choose borderless windowed, these options become locked. On the other hand, traditionally, borderless windowed would allow us to L-tap faster out of the game. However, I've found that L-tapping was also instant when using display mode full screen. So for all of these reasons, this is what I would run the game at. Now, when it comes to boosting FPS in Marvel Rivals, the only viable option that you have is to use some sort of upscaler. In this game, this is either achieved by using temporal anti-aliasing and reducing the render scale, or by using DLSS, Epic TSR, AMD FSR, or Intel XESS. Now, to make this comparison somewhat manageable for myself, I'm just going to show you a freeze frame that I generated by spinning in a circle using a controller and then trying to extract more or less the same frame because all of these upscalers actually usually look pretty good when you just look at a static frame and then they completely fall apart once you start moving. And then I'm comparing always the exact same preset with the exception of TSR because they have their own presets which we're going to look at after this segment. On the left hand side we have the baseline, so this is with temporal anti-aliasing and a render resolution of 100%. Moreover, you can see the average performance gains for my Intel and NVIDIA based system in blue and for my AMD based system in red at the top. Unsurprisingly, at the ultra performance preset, I'm seeing a significant boost in performance across all of the different upscalers, however, the image quality is really poor. Stepping one up to the performance preset, which is probably the first one that I could recommend in case that you have a really weak system. And in this case, I really hope that you have an NVIDIA GPU such that you can use DLSS as it's clearly the best looking and best performing out of the three different options. 
Just be aware that fringing behind moving objects is most extreme on the LSS, as you can see where the flags are sort of horizontal at the top of the comparison image. On the other hand, AMD FSR is extremely grainy and lines are extremely aliased, as you can see from the bottom part of the picture. And Intel XSS unfortunately is super blurry and at the same time, stuff also looks very pixelated, for instance in the flame at the bottom of the image. Pretty much the same holds true for the balanced preset, where once again the LSS looks clearly the best out of the three. This is also the preset where the fringing becomes less noticeable, so this is probably the first preset that I could recommend you to run if you have a somewhat decent system. The quality preset looks pretty much identical to the balanced preset, except for XCSS, which looks significantly better. However, XCSS is still super blurry, especially when compared to the other options, so I still wouldn't quite recommend you to use XCSS at this preset. At ultra quality, we're actually starting to lose performance when we use AMD FSR, because I noticed that AMD FSR appears to be using higher resolution textures than when running the game natively. Unfortunately, AMD FSR is just super pixelated, which is why I simply wouldn't recommend to use it in Marvel Rivals. At this preset though, XSS becomes a viable alternative to DLSS, as the image becomes a little bit less blurred. However, I would still recommend DLSS over XSS if you have an NVIDIA GPU. Finally, moving up to the native preset, which apparently runs the game at native resolution, but still applies some anti-aliasing through um, whatever techniques. I'm not quite sure how it works, but clearly all of these options reduce performance and AMD FSR actually drops performance by over 50 FPS. Generally speaking, I really wouldn't recommend you to use any of the native presets. Moving on to Epic TSR, and here we start with the Ultra Performance preset. And we can see that each of these presets actually has an additional anti-aliasing option that can range from low to ultra. Because of that, I didn't want to directly compare them to the other um, upscalers, but frankly TSR is not a great upscaler anyways. As you can see, all of the presets have heavy fringing at the top of the image, and you can also see these horrible horizontal lines in the fire. This becomes slightly better with TSR performance, however the fringing is still very noticeable at the top of the image. The balanced preset is the first that I could potentially start recommending, at least at the ultra anti-aliasing option, however you should note that you still get extreme fringing. And finally, I didn't really find too much of a difference visually when moving up to DSR quality, however the fringing is still present even at that preset. So in summary, if you need a boost in performance and you have an NVIDIA GPU, then I would highly recommend to use NVIDIA DLSS, at least at the balanced preset, or if you have a higher end GPU, you can also use ultra quality. Note, I also quickly measured latency for the balanced preset, and as you can see, DLSS further reduces latency by roughly 12%. On the other hand, if you have an AMD GPU, either use Epic TSR at the super resolution mode performance and the anti-aliasing preset ultra, or use Intel XCSS at the ultra quality preset. By the way, if you're enjoying the huge effort that I'm putting into producing these no-nonsense graphics guides, then please hit that like button and leave a comment down below for the algorithm and let me know what your favorite other games are that you'd like me to cover. Moving on to an option that you absolutely want to disable, and that's frame generation. Now the way that frame generation works is that it introduces fake artificial frames between the frames that your GPU actually produces. And because of that, the AI system doesn't have any concept of your inputs and so it actually always lags a bit behind of what you actually input into the game. Now while this appears to significantly boost the average FPS by 50 or 60% from my testing, at the same time it completely tanks latency by almost doubling it. Moreover, you can see that on my AMD based system I'm actually losing on my 1% lows, so frame generation is just a big no-no. On the other hand, an option that you absolutely want to enable is low latency mode if you have an NVIDIA GPU. Now this option tries to ensure that your CPU is never getting too much ahead of your GPU, because usually you are GPU bottlenecked in these modern games and that leads your CPU to produce many more frames than your GPU can realistically process. So you can think of reflex low latency like a dynamic FPS limiter that ensures that you never have this kind of pileup of frames coming from your CPU into your GPU. And from this comparison, it's clear that enabling reflex low latency almost halves our input latency at of course pretty much the same frame rate that we are getting without reflex low latency, because in the end, what you see are the frames that the GPU can actually process.
Now, unfortunately, if you have an AMD GPU, you cannot use NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. However, there is a way to actually uh, mimic what NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency is doing by using an in-game FPS limiter. So after you've set up all of your graphic settings according to your liking, you'll want to download a tool called NVIDIA Frame View. Now this works regardless if you have an AMD or NVIDIA GPU, and you can just download and install it and just enable this overlay in the top right corner. Next, you'll want to boot into the practice range and find this spot up here above these two or six spots that shoot each other, because from my testing, this was the spot that had the lowest performance in the entire testing range. Now, once you've done that, you want to make a mental note of your end-to-end -end latency in the frame view overlay, and you then want to enable the in-game FPS limiter. You want to set it to roughly about the same FPS that you're getting at the worst performing spot in the test range. Et voilà, when you go back into the game, you should see your end-to-end -end latency being more than halved. As I mentioned previously, with reflex low latency, my 1% lows actually improved by roughly 5%, while at the same time reducing latency by 10 milliseconds. On the other hand, of course, if you need to use an FPS limiter, your average and 1% lows are going to be reduced because the limiter is usually below what your ideal FPS limitation would be as it's been set up dynamically using NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. However, you can see that I was actually able to reduce latency by 13 milliseconds on my old AMD system by simply setting up an FPS limiter. On a final note, if you do use NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, don't add a manual FPS limiter on top, because this would completely defeat the purpose of NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency in the first place. Finally, you can enable an FPS overlay and network stats if you like, but of course this comes down to personal preference. However, what you should definitely not use is VSync, as most modern displays don't really have the issue of screen tearing anymore, as the refresh rate is high enough that you won't even notice this, so generally you'll want to leave VSync disabled. And with that, let's move on to the final segment of this video, where I'll cover the different graphical presets, spoiler alert, most of these neither affect performance nor the visual quality of Marvel Rivals. Starting with global illumination quality, we can see that this drastically reduces performance, especially on the Lumen presets. This option makes the game look much less flat and much more lively, as it introduces a lot more dark and bright areas to the game. For instance, this top seems to be illuminated from the bottom, and in the middle of that tower you can see kind of a light shining down. However, you can see that this comes with a hefty FPS penalty. Also, the Lumen Global Illumination makes dark areas of the map even darker and therefore make it harder to actually spot enemy players. On the other hand, when I compare the two different standard Global Illumination quality presets, I can't really find any difference in the visual quality, but because performance is slightly reduced, my recommendation would be to just leave Global Illumination on SSGI low quality. Moving on to Reflection Quality, where we have the option to choose between screen space and Lumen Reflections. Visually, those two options look pretty similar, with Lumen Reflections being a little bit more blurry. However, both of these settings result in roughly the same performance. Model Detail reduces performance by up to 5%. However, when looking at a side-by-side -side comparison, we can see that this actually only affects models at a very far distance. For instance, I found that flowers are more numerous on the Ultra preset. On the other hand, when I look at player models, I don't really find much of a difference, at least not on distances where you're likely to be engaging with enemy players. So since there is really no competitive advantage of using Model Detail Ultra, and since this incurs a slight performance dip, my recommendation is to leave Model Detail on low. For post-processing, I wasn't able to find a performance impact, and I also wasn't able to find any visual differences with higher presets. For shadow quality, you can see the visual differences of the different presets on screen right now. And as you can see, the low preset really generates very blobby and blotchy shadows, and especially the player shadow looks just like a huge cloud. For visual reasons, I'd recommend to run the shadow quality either on medium or high, depending on whether or not you can spare a bit more performance. On the other hand, ultra is a bit of an overkill, both in terms of the visual quality and also in terms of the hefty FPS penalty. But of course, if you want to get the highest possible performance, you want to leave this on low. For texture details, once again, I wasn't able to find a significant reduction in performance when increasing this option. And when looking at a side-by-side -side comparison, I also wasn't able to spot any differences, neither on far objects nor on objects that are really close to the player.
Now, because Marvel Rivals is a cartoony type of game, I don't really think that texture detail has any effect on the textures in the game whatsoever, and thus you can just leave this on low. For effects detail, I actually was able to find a slight but measurable reduction in performance when increasing this option from low to ultra. However, in a competitive game, you'll usually want to leave effects on the lowest preset in order for the game to be a bit easier to follow along, especially if a lot of things are going on in the scene. Finally, for foliage quality, once again, I didn't find a significant reduction in performance and when doing side-by-side -side comparisons, I also wasn't able to find how this option is supposed to affect the foliage of the game. Therefore, I'd recommend to leave this on low as well. Now finally, I want to mention that I did see that there is a Reddit thread out there that claims that you can further improve performance in Marvel Rivals by adding some config tweaks to the engine in a file. Unfortunately, this no longer works and the game completely ignores that file, and therefore there is basically no config tweaks that we can do to further improve performance in Marvel Rivals. But that's it for today guys, thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.